Hi, this is Mark Washacek with a new tool to help you plan windbreak work. In February of 2016, South Dakota released an updated windbreak tool 2.0. I put the tool together after the South Dakota Efficiency Committee developed some ideas for the workbook. I'd like to present four tutorial videos to help you understand all that the tool has to offer. I believe you will be more efficient and better technically uh, while using the tool than you ever were before. Let's get started. This is video one, the basic instructions. We'll explore the instructions tab. We will take a look at the workbook maintenance tab and we'll take a look at the tools button. And so the first thing I want to start out with is telling you that this is the menu page. And there's a menu button on every page that brings you back to this spot. So you really can't get lost in this workbook. Let's go into the instructions page and you'll see that everything is explained here and that every tab is fully explained. Here's the establishment tab from the menu. Here's the renovation tab from the menu. Here's the workbook maintenance. We'll go into that in detail and so on. I do want to point out that here is my contact information. If you are interested in contacting me with a question or comments or concerns, go ahead and email me. That'd be fine. Give me a call. Whatever works for you. So I'd like to then show you that there's a tools button on many of the pages, not all of them, but many of them. And that tools button uh, offers you a lot of uh, ability in the workbook. You can move around readily in the workbook real easily. Um, as an example, let's say we wanted to look at look to see what species are recommended in a windbreak suitability group three, or now it's called tree, sorry conservation tree and shrub group three. Uh, in eastern South Dakota. So I can click on this button and it takes me to the information and I can scroll down and look to see that, well, yes, choke cherry is, but so is uh, nine bark. So um, you can take a look at this information and of course this is for shrubs, deciduous trees. It's right out of the tech guide, conifers. So um, you can move around quickly and then there's a return button and I want to tell you that uh, generally, no matter how you got to a page, whether you clicked on a tab at the bottom or whether you used the tools button to get here, if you click return, it should take you almost at all times back to where you just came from. And we came from the instruction page, so that's where we're at now. I also want to show you uh, another thing with the tools button, and that is uh, not only can you move around to these various places in the workbook and get information from it and pop right back to where you were. You can also print. And so what you can print is the 6E. Uh, e is for establishment. R is for renovation. So we've got uh, worksheets for both of those that you can produce in this workbook. Uh, you can produce an order, li uh, order list cost estimate and you can pr print out the example which is very helpful as you fill out your first couple uh, windbreak designs. So Check the boxes you want to print. They'll click the box and it will print uh, all that you've got checked. Pretty, pretty handy little deal. So let's go back to the menu and take a look at the workbook maintenance section. So workbook maintenance allows you, you to edit vendor prices. Let's go look at that and see what that's about. So th I said this workbook can give you a cost estimate. Generally on large plantings, you'll want to provide the producer some sort of estimate of what it's going to roughly cost him so that he uh, can plan for that cost in his budget. So here, uh, check with your local vendors and find out how they charge and get as close as you can. You, you're never going to have a, a perfect information here as, way, as far as how the vendor charges, but check the one that's closest and, get, and put in uh, the numbers that are the closest. This is not uh, supposed to be a cost estimate um, that he can rely on to the penny by any means. This is simply a cost estimate for planning. Uh, you put in the cost of fabric, you can put in the cost of hand plants, 
and tree tube stakes and insulation installation uh, so I will click the return key here and we'll come back to where we were the other thing you can do here is to edit the species list so in our species list are all the trees that are in the South Dakota technical guide um, for planting in South Dakota and if you need to add a tree you can add a tree if you need you want to delete some trees you can delete some trees uh, in the list um, it's up to you I am going to go back and show you how this generally uh, works when you're in a in the workbook and you're doing a conservation uh, South Dakota CPA 6 filling out the design and you come to a tree species that you want to add and you say well let's see I want to I want to put in Myers spruce that's what this uh, producer is interested in and uh, it looks like it should grow here and well no it's not on our South Dakota list of approved species and so we've given uh, variances for that in the past and probably you could get one if you're in eastern South Dakota in the future so what you can do is I'd recommend you get a variance and then you can go in here and add the species to this list so you pop in here you jump down to a blank line and you type in here Meyer spruce and then go back to the top because that button said you must click here so do that and it'll take you back here and you're ready to plan Meyer spruce in your planting so that works pretty slick and pretty fast uh, once you use this a few times and if there's a species that you're going to add for the whole season you know put it in and then save the the workbook and then open up a blank copy and it'll be there for you so that's pretty handy I want to show you a couple of other things. This basically allows you, I'll go back to the menu here. This allows you to type in where you need to to put information in. But if you're going to try to type in a cell that doesn't need any information, it's going to all generally, I got it set, I hope, to always give you a, a warning. You're trying to change something on a protected sheet. You don't need to change this cell. And so it's locked up to a certain degree. And, and that'll be helpful and it'll be hard to um, for you to corrupt it and that's why I did that the you're gonna see an exception to that in the next video I'll just point that out right now um, the workbook contains and I, I covered some of that an order list and um, oops excuse me I'm gonna go back here an order list cost estimate so when you have one a windbreak plan, we'll use we'll use this example, and it will come in here when we do our uh, our tree plan. But the species will be listed here, and the number that need to go out to that site, and all the sites I, I should say for that particular individual, and then the cost estimate uh, it gives you that here, based on the information you uh, put in the put in earlier in the prices tab. So. Um, that's pretty handy. We also have included renovation in this workbook, and we'll go into that in a whole vi in a, a short video. And so with that, I think I'm going to go back. I'm at the menu. Uh, I am going to sign off for this one, and this will be the end of tutorial number one, and we'll see you on the next tutorial. Thank you. Hi, this is Mark Washacek with tutorial two of four in the series for the Windbreak Workbook uh, developed in 2016 for the South Dakota NRCS. In this video, we'll look at uh, how to develop a Windbreak Establishment Plan. And that's pretty simple with the workbook. What we do is we go into the Establishment tab from the uh, main menu here. and on that page you'll have various forms that you can use and so what we'll start is right away with the CPA 6e page 1 and I filled out some of it because that would just uh, slow the this tutorial down if I filled everything in but you if you complete the the blanks 
with the underlines here uh, for the information that's necessary. I'll fill out a couple for you. Practice, there's drop downs. Uh, we've got windbreak establishment is the practice that we're going to use in this example. 380, the number pops in. Uh, conservation tree and shrub group, I've looked that up. And that comes from the table one, and it's based on the soil uh, map unit that you're on. And we've added uh, a couple of blanks here. Resource concern. A person will have already been out to the farm and taken a look at what the what the problem is, and and uh, that's really what you're identifying here is what that what that problem was. In this particular case. Um, we're using a, an example where they had excess drifted snow in their uh, yards. And so then we can put in the purpose. Purposes come right directly from the practice. And so we're, notice there's different practices in here. We're using 380 uh, as the practice we've selected. And the um, purpose that we're going to cho choose is uh, manage snow deposition. And that uh, matches up with solving our resource concern and it should so then you put in the chemicals used on the uh, plot in the last few years we had put the year in up here and it automatically knows what the previous three years is and you can fill that out and then you simply check the boxes that are applicable um, whether fallows needed and utilities are present and whether cultural resources have been addressed and so on what the site preparation needed is um, what the planting method is going to, going to be if it's going to be something else and you simply you know check check that box but uh, fairly straightforward it's going to bring some information over from page two in these green cells uh, you don't have to enter anything in there and so basically we've, I've entered the information uh, into the form already it'll bring I've Put some things in the example already. That's why it's already got an acreage figure and acres planned. Uh, but it'll bring this information, the green cells, over from page two when we're done as a summary onto page one. So basically, the front page is straightforward, and we will then go into page two, which I can click on from the tab, or you can pop back to establishment. You can always get around that way and go to page two. So I filled some of this in already. I will show you why I did that here in a minute. But when you get on page two, use the example. There's an example for this page, and it's very helpful. I'm going to go to the example for 6E2. And it's completed, and it's got these comments uh, in it. And it pretty much really goes through what order you should put your data in to make it fit the most efficient to fill this stuff in. And, and uh, this is very useful. So I'm going to return to where I was, and basically it's telling me to put a site number in first, then put my isolation width in for the north or the west row, whichever uh, the outside row here is. Then it says put your row numbers in. I'm going to do a seven row windbreak here in my example. I'm going to show you another way to fill that in. You can start here and just drag this down seven spots and it'll fill your number in if you get the plus sign make sure you got not that sign but you want to get the the when you're on the cell get the plus sign there we go so that's very important um, and then you can drag that down so you notice that this white cell popped in here it's asking for something when the when it's when it changes a cell from green to white and that's what makes this a uh, pretty efficient way to fill this worksheet out and that is if my in between the row spacings 14 feet it populates everything below that with the number above most of our wind breaks are rectangular and uh, isolation is the same on both ends and row spacing is the same throughout so it just speeds up the process for you so we're going to create a windbreak here and uh, I'm just doing this for example so someone that says hey that doesn't meet our standards you know um, that's fine. You should double check me. And how would you double check what, whether uh, one of these species meets our standard? Well, I said we were in uh, windbreak suitability group three in East in Brookings County. So here's our windbreak suitability group three, and uh, I know that I can plant a lot of shrubs. Matter of fact, there isn't a shrub on the list that doesn't fit in windbreak suitability group three. Uh, so that's a good 
good deal and just return and so basically what the producer is interested in what you think will grow good on his uh, site and with his maintenance and so on so we're gonna we're gonna pick uh, plum uh, actually I'm gonna change my mind and I'm gonna pick uh, a cedar for the first row and this of course you'd work out with uh, the landowner and taking into consideration their needs and preferences um, so Eastern Red Cedar, I was going to show you that if you click above this line, it'll go one page at a time for you, and that's a pretty handy deal. So it's moving through these pretty fast. So there's Eastern Red Cedar. Our standards say if we're going to put the first row to be cedar, we should have a medium-sized tree in the second row. Uh, I'm going to plant uh, a Manchurian crab apple, I think is... I'm just picking stuff off the top of my head here. So this has to be able to take a lot of snow load is, is what you're looking at there. And if you want to look at row arrangements and uh, spacing and density and so on, we've got a little clip from uh, our tech guide in here about which rows should be shrubs, which rows should be uh, cedars or junipers, mid-sized trees, and so on. This information talks about Still the suggested profile of a windbreak and also looking at spacing. And so this is a nice little handy deal to pop into. Density is in here also for your different types of windbreaks that you're trying to uh, plant. So then we can go to return. We can, so I am again just uh, going to make some stuff up here for my example. We're going to put um, a we're going to wait, put pine in row four. We're going to put uh, hackberry. And we're going to put, I think we kind of don't plant a lot of green ash anymore, but I'm going to plant a row of green ash. I am going to put a ponderosa pine row in here. And so, so if you get to a point where um, you're not sure, like the guy wants to have a row of Meyer spruce, and maybe I gave this example already, but you know you can change uh, the list and add that species by clicking this button. I think I did go over that in the first video. Um, as a matter of fact, yeah, I didn't save save that. So we'll go in here and. Okay, we want Meyer spruce in this list here, so I slide down to where it's empty. Meyer spruce. And better remember to click that button at the top. Okay, I'm back. Let's put Meyer spruce in here. And we'll finish off with a lilac. I think we call that common, if I remember right. Okay, so there's our, I got I got my row numbers in. These have to be numbers. Uh, that's the way I wrote the spreadsheet. It helps figure things out uh, by using numbers. So they have to be numbers. And then what's the approximate row spacing? Cedar is 8, and crabapple is 8, and hackberry is 10, and we've got recommendations for these if you forget by going into the tools and so on. Pine, Meyer spruce, and lilac. So, all right. And here it wants approximate uh, length of the rows. Well, it, white cell, it wants the first row, 1,000 feet. Okay. Well, it populated everything else based on that those are 1,000 feet. But if one row is longer than the other you can overtype these here's a formula you can overtype the formula and that might be 1100 feet now that formula is gone but everything below it says 1100 so if you want the rest of them to be a thousand you got to change one of them back to a thousand and then everything below it becomes the same as what you typed in above it so that's the way this auto populate works now i've overtyped these cells um, and so 
The only way I'm going to get that back, which I've made this setup pretty easy, I can take this one down here and I can run it up through all the green ones. And I put it back to having formulas and they repeat from the one above them. So I just thought I'd show you that. That works pretty slick. Uh, we'll leave it as a thousand feet for every roll rectangular. Uh, let's quickly put in fabric. Um, yeah, I'm going to put fabric on these rows and I can get that plus sign and drag it. I didn't really want to put it on that last row without a tree in it. So tree tubes. No, we're not going to put uh, tree tubes on these. However, uh, this hackberry, I think I'm, you know, he's, we're in a spot where we're going to put tree tubes on the hackberry. So I can put one, whoops, we can put one uh, row hackberry. Okay, so I've got a plan and it's got the acres and the feet and the rods and everything else down here. It's carried over to show you it's carried over that information about the planned acres to the front. Um, so let's go back here. So that's all pretty much filled out. I'm going to let's go to the bottom here quickly. And you have to fill in the section, the township range. Um, and then you can do a little drawing. I placed a bunch of these drawings. You can click on them and slide them up and put them wherever you need them in this uh, in this uh, section. And you can change the site number on here if you need to. So these are preset little drawings and you can change the size and the shape and do whatever you want, the length. There you go. So use those as you need to. You can slide them back out of the way if you want. So all right, I've made I've made this one site one is this windbreak. This little green one's site two. And I've already filled in site two, you see, uh, for a wet site that has species that'll tolerate um, the conservation tree and shrub group two. And I put a note down here, plant site two in lower area, green shaded on site on map, conservation tree and shrub group two. And so we'd switch to this uh, planting when we got to that spot in the windbreak. So hopefully that'll work for when you're when you're changing conservation tree and shrub groups. One more thing I want to show you is I can alternate species with this plant. If you go up to this comment box, it tells you which box to check for that. It's the top box to alternate. And if I alternate, here I'm going to alternate uh, green ash and let's say, let's say I alternated green ash and just as, a, as an example here, hackberry. All right, so that, oops, hackberry and we'll try that again green ash. All right, so now half of this row is going to be counted as hackberry plants, half of it is green ash plants. That's the way it totals it up. So you're going to need uh, 100 plants, 50 of them will be hackberry, 50 of them will be green ash. So, and when I, I say that because we can go over here now and take a look at the uh, cost estimate. And here's the order list. Um, if somebody's going to have to order trees for this planting, here you go. Here's what we need. If they're going to load them up prior to going out to this site, it's all the trees we need for that those two two sites. Here you go. Um, kind of a handy deal. This thing's at the prices that are in here. It's going to cost about seventy five hundred dollars to plant uh, over two and a half acres of trees. So. There's some good information for the producer to get an idea what ballpark he's in as far as what this is going to cost him. So let's go. Let's return. If I'm not using the alternated with uh, column, I can use this in a different way. That when I go to check out the planting, maybe the vendor ran out of hackberry prior to planting this one, but uh, checked on a substitution and we agreed to green ash here, that type of thing. So I can input uh, that green ash were were uh, applied rather than the hackberry. So I can use this column in two different ways. Not both ways at the same time, but I can use it in two different ways, uh, one or the other. So then let's uh, check out the the planting. So I'd come over here and to complete the checkout, I'd say, what was the isolation? Well, in this case, I'm going to say it was 10. 
and it's asking me for information in this white cell here. Uh, what is the uh, row spacing? Well, it's 14 just like it was planned. Well, that's great. So it completes that information. What's the in row spacing of the trees? I'm going to, in my example, say we checked it out and the plants were planted just like we planned and so just to show you how this works if you have some different number you should put that in there when you're measuring them out and you wouldn't measure every tree you'd you know i usually would walk off 100 feet and count the trees and then i would divide divide it out and i'd know about how far apart they were planted um the length of of the row in feet we're going to say it's um 1020 a little longer than it was planned so it'll complete everything in here and it'll put 1020 in every row you can make like i say you can over type the formulas on those if they're something different and then over here in fabric they got formulas in them you see but if you check this box that will complete all of these feet for having done fabric if there was a yes in this column over here uh, so it was planned and you said 1020 feet was the length of the tree row and you said did they put the fabric yes but i can change the length of fabric if in fact they only got half of a row fabric or something uh, tree tubes works the same way It'll put in the number of tree tubes based on the number of trees with these figures that you put in here on the checkout. And it'll fill out only those rows that you said are planned to have um, tree tubes. If one got applied and wasn't planned, you could type over the formula again and put the number of trees in there. So there we've checked that out. And so, um, I think with that, we'll pop back to the menu, and we have finished the establishment uh, tutorial. We'll talk to you on the next tutorial. Thank you. Okay, here's our third video in the series of how to use the Windbreak Workbook 2016 from South Dakota. And I'm going to, in this uh, video, talk about the renovation portion of the workbook. So we'd start on the menu, and we could click on Renovation. And when we go there, you'll see there's some options that we can choose. We have an instruction sheet, and it describes how to complete the South Dakota CPA 6R, R for Renovation, with page 1. So I'm just going to pop over there. Now I can return back to the renovation and go there or lots of ways, but I'm just going to pop over to the next sheet. I filled most of it out uh, because it's just uh, filling in information. There's a windbreak type. I think that's important to fill out properly because really the purpose of windbreak renovation is to restore the windbreak to, to its original function. And so the type of windbreak that you had probably is an important thing to record. In this particular example, row, uh, we're going to do row removal and replacement. And to keep it simple, that's all we're going to do here. You could do a number of these things actually in a windbreak renovation, and you'd check the appropriate ones. Um, it says here for any renovation method that includes new trees and shrubs, a CPA 6E form will be completed. Well, that's the planning form for the new windbreak, new trees and planting. So that makes sense. So I didn't check any of these or I would be filling in the blue cells here. Uh, but here, row replacement and removal, here's, uh, I'm going to do it on April 15th is the plan. It's a thousand feet long, uh, the windbreak is. And we're going to use a cat and scraper and stumps and roots to be removed, yes. And the, the brown cells here, or the green cells, they'll, they'll, be, cal they'll be filled in from uh, calculations based on the next page. And this sheet, uh, South Dakota always used, but it wasn't uh, very uh, complete. Uh, we, have no, we got a thousand foot windbreak, but we don't know how many rows we're going to work on. And, and actually, the rows here will come in from the uh, second page. So we'll 
pop over here to 6R2, second page. This is basically like building a plan for a windbreak, but this is the existing windbreak you got. You, had, you measure these things out. You, oops, excuse me. You have site one, and you have an isolation uh, was 12 feet. And don't sweat the details. If you go out and measure, and there's hard to tell how much isolation was there from the first row, do your best. Um, but we had a, generally you can tell how many row windbreak you had. Let's uh, say we had a six row windbreak. Spacing between the rows was about 15 feet. Okay, so there's basically your plan. And then it's asking you to fill in, well, what species do you have? You may choose to do different things depending on the species. For example, I got uh, some uh, honeysuckle in the outside row, and maybe those are okay. You know, I'm, I'm just making this example up. And you've got various other uh, species in here that have deteriorated over time. They were planted, you know, 80 years ago. Um, and you've got some Siberian elm involved. You know, it, it's hard. You, you, you do your best to identify the species. If, in fact, you don't know, you might have some unknown species. They, they're so far gone, it's hard to tell what you've got. But you know you had a row of something in there. Uh, so you do your best to identify the species that were in here, and I'm, you can see I'm just kind of making this this up, and maybe it's the last row just filled with buckthorn, you know, or got a lot of, a lot of old windbreaks that are, are that way. Uh, here, let's let's do our best to to get to to estimate, you know, what these were. Not terribly important, although not, it's not really terribly important, I don't think, in the in the in the scheme of things. Uh, you can't even tell this, but you figure that was a shrub row, that type of thing. Okay, here, this is kind of important here. Uh, how long was this windbreak? Well, it's a thousand feet. So it fills in all that information. You change these distances for each row uh, if you need to. Um, this is the actual whole windbreak, and we may be working on a portion of it, or some are all, some rows are okay. You'll see this. Is the fun is the row functional? Let's just say this one is, and the rest of these are not. And so because the rest of these are not, we're going to do something about them. Uh, the first one. What are we going to do with the first one? We're going to do nothing with the first one because it's functional. The, the, things like these this can happen. The next one we already said we're going to do row replacement and removal. And so with with this particular one. We're going to replace these rows, but we're going to do the green. We're going to leave the honeysuckle and the ash right now, so he has some protection. Uh, typically, we don't take whole windbreaks out and leave a farm place without any protection, and and most producers don't really want that. So we may be um, going to do these three in the future, but right now these are the worst, and we're going to do row replacement and removal of these right now and so that's basically uh, how you account for each row in a in a windbreak and what we're going to do and so on and so forth so this is not going to be planned on the cpa6 obviously and these are not either but these certainly are yes we're going to replace these trees and so uh, basically i have a windbreak renovation plan Put together. Oh, one thing I'll show you here. When when this uh, fills in these with the next number, just click on this little arrow here and say copy cells, and it'll straighten that out for you. So there's my windbreak renovation plan. Here's my acres, um, and I already actually showed you how many we got done. So I filled in the applied as if we were done. Also, the plan would only be done to this point. Um, yeah, and so this green cells carry over from the front page. I can put the person's cell phone number in here if I want to add another uh, phone number so we can get a hold of him. And we can tell uh, when it's applied and the date. And I can also uh, put my drawing in here also. So basically, those two pages amount to a renovation plan and 
we want to print that of course remember we can go to the print menu and here's the cpa 6r i have page one and i have page two page three was the extra page i don't need to check that okay so i'm not going to print here while i'm demonstrating um yeah that that pretty much uh is what we have for the renovation um, example. And so I'll end it there by going back to the menu and we will uh, say good luck until the next video. Okay, the fourth and final video in this series. Uh, we're talking about here the technical information that is embedded in or linked uh, from the Windbreak Workbook uh, 2016 from South Dakota. And so let's go from the menu into the technical information tab, and you'll see there's a wealth of information in here. And some of it we've already popped around in the worksheet uh, using, which uh, I guess I didn't show you the conservation tree and shrub group def the descriptions are here. Uh, I did show you the expected tree heights. Uh, we went into those work, those uh, sheets. There's a list of cultivars that are available, improved varieties of trees, you might say. Uh, there's a setback design, which is kind of handy. It uh, takes the information from the um, technical um, guide practice, uh, I should say practice um, description. And it puts it into a visual format from you and how far away you should stay from roads and so on and uh, different ownership boundaries and, you know, of the area to protect where you should plan your windbreaks. Uh, it's a nice little diagram and it gives uh, some definitions down here. And uh, I think it'll be a useful thing. I put it together a couple of years ago. And so I think you'll be able to make use of that. Um, the other thing that's in here uh, is the technical notes. And I actually have 37 in here, and then the others aren't in this worksheet, but there are links to them. And so just click on the blue links, and you'll be able to go and, and uh, go directly to them. And, it, you know, obviously, uh, there's we have so many um, woodland tech notes, and you can't keep all this information in your head at, at, at any time. So... Uh, you know, these links are useful to go in and read up on this or if you have a question and so on. Here's a good one on renovation that most people haven't read. Um, so we got a list of fact sheets that are in the uh, various locations. And I've put the links and I put, you know, some of them come from Lincoln, Nebraska. Some of them come from North Dakota. Um, so this was uh, recommended by the the uh, DC committee that worked on uh, trying to improve our technical uh, abilities, and it's a good idea to have this information accessible in one spot. Then there's some general information uh, that you could possibly give to uh, landowners if they're going to be possibly interested in a field windbreak. You know, here's some information for them to read, that type of thing. And lastly, uh, the, there may be more videos on here in the future. Uh, but right now there's a, vi a video link uh, that's on our YouTube, and it's an old video, but an oldie but a goodie, as they say, uh, techniques for better tree planting. And it's, you know, the, the things you need to pay attention to while you're planting uh, trees is basically the same today as it was 20 years ago. And so um, I recommend any time you have new uh, employees planting trees uh, for districts or, you know, however that works out, that they get a chance to take a look at this video. It's very good and very useful, and they'll they'll learn something from it. I can guarantee that. And so you can see there's a tremendous uh, amount of information here, and use it to uh, design your windbreaks. I'll take you back to the menu, and I think with that you'll be able to use this spreadsheet to its fullest ability, to your fullest ability, and to its uh, maximum uh, efficiency. So I'll say to you, good luck and. Thank you for watching these videos.